Our hope is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. To thee we come, O Lord, our God. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will go unto the altar of God. Our help is in the name of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we might be found worthy to participate in this holy sacrifice. And now please make an examination of conscience. Having confessed our sins unto God and asking for his forgiveness, I will offer the act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one of the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O oh God, you will again renew us. And your people will rejoice in you. Show us your mercy, Lord. And grant us your salvation. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come to you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. When I found your words, I devoured them because they became my joy and the happiness of my heart. Alleluia. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, 
with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, your Son, reveal the mysteries of heaven to us and call us his friends. Grant us the grace to prove ourselves worthy of his choice. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, you gave us mothers for the rearing of each new generation and the fulfillment of your purposes on earth. You poured into their hearts the graces of faith, love, and sacrifice. On this day, dedicated to the honor of our mothers, we ask that you would bless all the mothers of our congregation, as well as all our faithful departed mothers. Empower them to lovingly fulfill the obligations you gave them, as they look to the example of Mary, the Blessed Mother of our Lord, and the lives of all devout and holy women. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity with the Holy Spirit and art one God, forever and ever. Amen. On this, the sixth Sunday of Easter, we take the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Peter entered, Cornelius met him, and falling at his feet, paid him homage. Peter, however, raised him up, saying, Get up! I myself am also a human being. Then Peter proceeded to speak and said, In truth, I see that God shows no partiality. Rather, in every nation, whoever fears him and acts uprightly is acceptable to him. While Peter was still speaking these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the word. The, the circumcised believers who had accompanied Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit should have been poured out on the Gentiles also, for they could hear them speaking in tongues and glorifying God. Then Peter responded, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit even as we have? He ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. The gradual. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love. Alleluia. This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. Alleluia. The second reading for today is taken from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, let us love one another because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. In this way the love of God was revealed to us. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might have life through him. And this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as expiation for our sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. If we love one another, God remains in us, and his love is brought to perfection in us. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. Through Christ our Lord, amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips 
that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy might be complete. This is my commandment, love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends, because I have told you everything I have heard from my Father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you, and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. May the name of our Lord Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Mothers are like buttons. They hold everything together. A quote from an unknown author. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters, and our dear mothers. On Mother's Day, there have been so many sermons that have been written about the virtues of motherhood and womanhood based on the attributes of the Blessed Virgin Mary, who served as the matriarch of her family. But today I would like to start my sermon with a story as found in the Gospel of Matthew, in which we read, While he was speaking to the crowds, his mother and his brothers were standing outside, wanting to speak to him. Someone told him, Look, your mother and your brothers are standing outside wanting to speak to you. But to the one who had told him this, Jesus replied, who is my mother? And who are my brothers? And pointing to his disciples, he said, Here is my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Some may look at the scripture passage and say to themselves that the Lord was insensitive to make such a statement. I am sure that many of us have heard this statement, you have but one mother. In contrast with these words, I am sure that our Lord loved his mother and his family most deeply. We have but glimpses into the life of Mary as found in the New Testament, 
but what we can ascertain, Mary was always righteous unto the Lord. In return, God found favor with Mary to bring his only begotten son Jesus through her womb into the world. How sacred was the visitation from the archangel Gabriel who spoke to her in Luke chapter 1 verse 30. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You know, my brothers and sisters, we read horror stories of mothers who have not found favor with God or God finding favor in them. I believe that God has given women who become mothers a most important and many times difficult responsibilities. Paul, in his letter to Titus, speaks of the need for women to be righteous and godly, serving as an example to the younger women. Titus was to have a ministry in Crete that was known for its ungodliness and unruliness. In, Ti in Titus chapter 2, verse 4 and 5, Paul gives this instruction to Titus. Likewise, teach the older women to be reverent in the way they live, not to be slanderers or addicted to much wine, but to teach what is good. Then they can urge the younger women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled and pure, to be busy at home, to be kind, and to be subject to their husbands, so that no one will malign the Word of God. When we re revisit the story of Jesus being told of his mother and brothers wanting to speak with him, he declares that it is those who do, do the will of God in heaven who are his sisters and brothers and mothers. Righteousness breeds righteousness. It should be noted that no woman is perfect and motherhood is not an easy job. I believe that motherhood is a ministry unto the Lord for it is a ministry of teaching and preparing the children to follow God and setting an example of the love of Christ to them as Mary fulfilled her ministry in raising Jesus. Mothers so many times are called upon to be more than the chief cook and bottle washer of the family. And when their self-fulfillment is placed before their responsibilities as a mother to their family, so many times families spin out of control. The Holy Bible sets forth some of the responsibilities of motherhood. Among them are, first, to love your husband. A marriage should take priority above all things. In Ephesus chapter 5, verse 22 and 23, Paul lays down the principles that should govern the home, where the husband and the wife should first seek to love each other and both be righteous unto the Lord. They are both called upon to set an example to their children on how a successful marriage takes place. Both the wife and husband also need to be aware of the dangers of placing their own pursuits and priorities above their marriage without seeking to have God in their marriage and in their lives, we have sadly seen so many dysfunctional and broken marriages because of it. The second responsibility is to love your children. Loving our children does not mean giving them everything they want. I recently came across this statement. A friend of my grandmother once told me 
If you raise your children right, you can spoil your grandchildren. But if you spoil your children, you'll end up raising your grandchildren. I think that she gave me greater insight into how I will raise my children. I believe that loving your children requires giving them structure and at times discipline in their lives. Mothers are called upon in the book of Psalms 127 verse 3 to care for the spiritual, the emotional, and physical needs. In the second letter of Paul to Timothy, who was a young priest, who Paul refers to as his son, writes in chapter 1 verse 5, I am reminded of your sincere faith, Timothy, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice, and now, I am sure, dwells in you as well. I believe it is essential for a mother and a father to develop Christian values in the home. We have all seen too many children who have become nightmares to our society due to the lack of involvement of their mothers and fathers. And how much more is the struggle for a single mother who many times has to work two jobs and is at the same time the caregiver for her children to raise her children in the way of the Lord. Finally, one of the main responsibilities for a woman is to learn to love yourself. I believe that for a woman or a mother to be successful in her marriage and in the rearing of her children, they first need to develop their own Christian character by emulating the virtuous life of Mary, who symbolizes self-control, purity, and righteousness. It is said that Christian homes are created. They do not just happen. William Barclay, a 20, 20th century Scottish minister and professor of divinity at the University of Glasgow wrote, it is the simple fact that there is no greater task, responsibility, and privilege in the world than to make a home. And so, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, so how can we honor our mothers on this most special day? It may be as simple as sending her a simple Mother's Day card, or flowers, or just calling her and thanking her. This is the least that we can do to honor them. And I believe that they will truly appreciate the love and kindness shown to them. For others whose mothers have passed, it will be a time to go and to pay respects at their resting place, if possible, or to offer a prayer to God, thanking Him for the blessings of having a mother. So my dear brothers and sisters, for all their love and sacrifice, Mother's Day is truly a most special day. It should also be noted that during the month of May, we honor a most special mother, Mary, the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ. She set the example of Christian motherhood. Always remember that Mary was righteous unto the Lord, and I'm sure she reflected and taught the love of God to her son. It is said that a true mother's love for her children is a selfless love. My dear mothers, may you reflect on the Blessed Mother Mary in all that you do. Take the example of this most blessed woman and set it as your standard. Always set your heart and mind unto God and reflect God's love in your marriage to your children and family who will see God through you and in you. May God bless all our dear mothers, both living and deceased, on this Mother's Day. And may we have in our hearts and minds and voices 
that say, thank you, Mom, for everything you have done. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of our Lord Jesus Christ be praised, now and forevermore. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son he has worshiped and glorified, he has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you will, and it will be done for you. Alleluia. and sisters that our gifts of love and sacrifice on this Mother's Day may truly be accepted by God our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and for the benefit of his Holy Church. 
Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, accept this oblation in the name of your Son. Empower us to know your law of love and to live it with open hearts and minds through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, Almighty God. Accept these gifts we offer and help us to honor our mothers, that our days may be long in the land in which you have given us. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also you. Lift up your whore hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. He is right and give him thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, especially at this time when he became our Paschal sacrifice, he is the true Lamb who took away the sins of the world. Through his death he conquered death for us, and by his wondrous resurrection he restored eternal life to us. Therefore, we join this day with the angels and the archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating, unceasingly. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the Apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. And special blessings upon our mothers. And all here present whose faith and devotion are known to you for whom we offer, or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor, above all others, the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who live, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing unto yourself, so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples, and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful, and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries, in which spiritually and bodily, in his entire being, he again lives among his people.
that soul moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you, God, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy, and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant, Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you a holy sacrifice in the Magdalene host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants and handmaidens who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. We pray for the repose of the souls of all our departed mothers. To these souls, Lord, and all the rest in Christ grant, we pray a place of refreshment light and peace through the same Christ our Lord amen and grant us your sinful servants who hope in the greatness of your mercy some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs and with all your saints who shed their blood for your name their hearts were always open to justice and mercy and with lives patterned after their divine master merited eternal joy number us in their company Lord not wearing our merits but pardoning our offenses through Christ our Lord amen by whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever, Amen. let us pray. Instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future, and by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, as also Andrew and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, 
we may always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us who receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for my judgment or condemnation. Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become my safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in all of us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father, in unity with the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What? Shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us now offer the act of spiritual communion. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. Lord, what we have received unto our lips, may we receive unto you. And may this temporal gift come to us in the last
go. Eat your bread with joy and drink your wine with a merry heart because it is now that God favors your works. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, through this Holy Communion, help us to be diligent in celebrating these days of joy. Teach us to heed your words and to walk in your whore ways. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Father, strengthened by this Holy Communion, give us grateful hearts for the blessings of motherhood. Inspire us to understand and appreciate a mother's spirit of love and self-denial of intelligent and voluntary sacrifice. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lo, the sacrifice has been offered. Alleluia. Alleluia. Oh, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which we, though unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy, may it be effective for ourselves and all those for whom we have offered it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning, through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found the life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world and through him the world was made. Yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. brothers and sisters, I thank you for sharing with us today's Holy Mass on this Mother's Day. It is my prayers that the good Lord might bless all of our mothers, both living and deceased, and that we truly come to appreciate all those things for which our mothers have done for us. We will conclude this morning's service with the offering of prayer and at the end of our prayers, we will offer a special prayer for the repose of the souls of all our departed mothers. May God again bless all of you dear mothers and thank you for all that you have done and continue to do. Thanks be to God.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And may we pray this day for the repose of the souls of all our departed mothers. Eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. And let perpetual light shine upon them. Eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. And let perpetual light shine upon them. Eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. And let perpetual light shine upon them. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.